Good evening and welcome to Monkeys With Fire. How is everybody this evening? I hope you're well. I do apologise for the slightly late start. Some gremlins in the system or is it because there's a monkey dealing with the technical stuff on this side? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that out for the jury to decide, hey? So how's your weekend been? Uh, hopefully you've had a good one. Um, obviously I wasn't available last night as you know so I'm eager to get right on into it and of course being Tuesday, it is Tabletop Tuesday, and so we have an exciting game to play live this evening, but it is a bit of a first, because not only is this game currently not available, and it will be available on Kickstarter early part next year, but also we've got the designer of the game waiting on Skype to join us in tonight's session. And hello, Houndstooth Minis, thank you very much for hosting the stream. So we've got even more people watching tonight, which is great. Let me pass over the camera here and welcome uh, James Frew, the designer of the old Hellfire Club, to the stream. Well then, so thank you very much for joining us tonight uh, on the channel. Uh, this is quite, a, as I said, an exclusive to actually get to play the game with the designer live. I am. Delighted to be here. Um, it's like this is this is a game that is about as much fun to watch to watch as it is to play. So I'm pleased to be able to give everyone that chance before they get their hands on it. And again, if you just uh, talk a little bit, James, so that uh, people can hear, make sure double check your voice. I I certainly can. I um, I hope my voice is acceptable to everyone. Um, if not, it's it's a real problem because uh, this is the only voice I have. Uh, Snick, <laughs> thank you very much for for letting me know. Uh, right. <laughs> I really do appreciate it. So that, so that, so that's good. We're all right now. <laughs> and, and you know the beauty of post production is that this will not seem like there was any issues whatsoever on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, it it is an absolute pleasure to be here, uh, especially after all of the trials that I put David through. Uh, thank you all so much for uh, for waiting. I really appreciate it. All right then, so let us get started. And I think this is as this is going to be a, a bit of a uh, mishmash. It's going to be an interview uh, along then with, of course, an actual gameplay session. So let's start with the interview section. And I guess the, the, the first and foremost question is, what is the Old Hellfire Club? Ah, uh, the Old Hellfire Club. The Old Hellfire Club is a storytelling game. Um, so if you're not familiar with that concept, um, it's, I suppose, somewhere in between an RPG and a card game. Uh, now, basically, uh, you you will cooperate with the other people playing uh, to tell a story. Uh, in this case, you are uh, all the final disreputable members of an ancient secret society that has fallen into disrepair in Victorian London. Uh, you're desperate for a drink. Uh, and so you're in a back alley gin shop uh, telling the stories of your greatest adventures uh, to try and impress people enough just to give you a couple of pennies uh, so you can have one last decent night. Um, but you do this uh, by using the various cards that are in the deck, which will give you little ideas for, for plots that you weave together uh, into a grand story. Uh, but throughout the whole game, only one of you can get that final drink at the end of the night. Uh, so you you're all trying to make yourselves out to be the hero of the story and undermine everything that everybody else is saying uh, to prove that they are, are just liars and bounders and cads. Um, so it's basically a game where you argue in a pub with your friends. <laughs> Sounds great. So as a designer, I mean, how did you come upon, first of all, the idea of the theme uh, and then maybe a little bit, tell us a little bit about the mechanics on how you managed to sort of create and put this game together? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, so in terms of the theme, I suppose there are two real parts to this. The, the first uh, part is is the, 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 the fairly obvious, I suppose, um, is that I, I, I love the historical theme. I think it's a, it's a huge amount of fun uh, to go back to a period of history where everyone is meant to be prim and proper um, and you just spend most of your time uh, being sick and swinging on ropes and, and pushing people off, off um, trains or whatever you want to do. Um, 
But in terms of when I was trying to, to create the game, um, anything that creates a really strong emotional reaction um, in people, so things like that, that backstabbing uh, feeling uh, in diplomacy uh, when you just completely go against your word, um, or alternatively, uh, something like uh, doggy dog um when you you start to to really emotionally empathize um with the with the citizens and so i was thinking to myself what's the the best possible feeling that i could try and invoke it's got to be winning a pub argument that's the best that most people feel um on on a night out um so what i i did was was just start to piece together what's that what's the essential elements of a, a pub argument it's uh, um, being right about something. So, okay, how do we start to build that in? And it all started to come together. Um, and I'm not going to, there's no denying, I took a huge amount of inspiration uh, from a game called uh, Once Upon a Time by James Wallace, um, in which you sort of piece together a fairy tale. Uh, but I added into that uh, a competitive aspects um where you can either do things that are terribly exciting uh, um with points that are worth lots and lots and lots um or you can do things that are quite frankly pathetic with coins with cards that are worth uh, not very much and it's it's all a case of, of of risk and hand management right i mean certainly when i've and i've played the game many many times now um uh, it, it was a game that, uh, because of course, I met you first of all at the UK Games Expo. Um, what was that? Beginning of June now, wasn't it? And as you, as I'm sure you appreciate, yes. it's a very hectic, hectic day for us. Um, it was a quick, you know, ten minutes. Oh, yes. tell, tell me about your game. <laughs> um, and it, it, it's taken. It took a while for me to actually come round to actually sit down and play the game because, of course, with so many things that that were needed to be covered. And as I was going through the game, it's like, oh my goodness, this this is brilliant! I, uh, you know, and we played it once, we played it twice, and then I took it to my local board gaming club, and we got quite a few people playing it there, and it's just been snowballing uh, within my sort of little sphere of influence, which has been brilliant. I'm so pleased to hear that. It's uh, it's I I this this isn't the first game. Um, that I have um, put together, um, but it's the first time that I felt that it's a game that's uh, I suppose, uh, worth showing people, um, and it is just such a pleasure to see so many people enjoying it. So I'm, I've just been really delighted by the reaction. And as you were sort of pointing out, one of the sort of the um, the major sort of aspects of the game is the storytelling and how this story evolves and the sort of the, the natural comedy that can come from the the cards that are being laid out. Absolutely. So where you've got a hundred different things that you could try and piece together um, and you can make a perfectly sensible story out of them, got them in the right order, but the deck is never going to give you them the right order. So you're just going to have to haphazardly career your way through Victoria and London doing the best you can with what, what the deck gives you. So, because of course, uh, you know, like with many players, uh, people have their preferences over the, the types of games. So a little bit of a curveball here. Um, if you're not a storytelling type of player, how, cause how else could you play this game? Is there, there is another way, isn't there, really? Absolutely. As one of the, um, the, the things about Old Health Archive, when I was first uh, coming up with the... Um, with the idea, uh, was a, a, an admission from myself that although I absolutely love storytelling games, my entire gaming group absolutely hated them. Uh, so I needed to come up with a way uh, to try and try and make it more palatable for people who didn't enjoy acting out a story, who didn't like that that process of coming up uh, with, a, with a narrative. Uh, so you can play the old Hellfire Club, club without telling any story at all. Um, I personally think it's better if you do, but if you're in a mixed group and you, you, you've got 
some people who are perhaps a little bit nervous or a little bit shy, uh, they can just play their cards and and then move on to the next person and they can pick up the story from where it left off. Um, there's absolutely no compulsion to tell a story at all. Um, and as, if someone starts to, to build in confidence or, or starts to get into the feeling, then they can join in. That It makes no difference to the gameplay. It makes no difference to the story. Everyone, absolutely everyone can enjoy this in however they want to that, that was definitely something that i, I recognized with it i mean yes of course i, I love the idea of uh, telling the story and hopefully i will be on form tonight <clears throat> um but what, what i found was <laughs> that there there becomes an element in the game where you're sort of looking at what cards other players have put down and now you're working the odds out of, okay, can I get away with playing this card because I can see these values are already down? And so it kind of falls into a, 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 what I'm going to describe as a bit of a trick-taking card game. Would I be right in saying that? Absolutely, absolutely. At, at, its, at its core, there is a, a solid risk-managed trick, trick, uh, trick-taking uh, card game here, but you can build on it to build an entirely new experience as well if you want, and I hope you do. <laughs> yes, yes, and of course that—that's the thing, isn't it? The, the story element it, it is a, a major boon for for the game, and uh, uh, I've had some stories that uh, cannot be repeated on, on this uh, this channel. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, they, they cause those stories ru- just seem to happen on their own. <laughs> they do indeed cause raucous laughing <laughs> when we were playing it. Right then, so um, shall we actually show everybody what the game's like and yes, sort of take it from there? This is another thing that I, I desperately wanted is a game that you can explain in in minutes out of the box. Um, so all you do is you, there are three different decks of. Co- cards in the game. Uh, the first one, which you can see right there, uh, is the um, the Boast deck. Uh, it's got 10 different suits in it, uh, and each suit has got 10 cards numbered 1 to 10. And each of the suits is a different sort of aspect uh, of Victorian life. So you've seen the, the, the Treason card from the Crime deck, um, and hopefully we'll get to see a couple more of the cards uh, as, as we go along. Uh, but there are things like um, commonplace things like places and people uh, but on top of that there are insults and there are weapons and we've got an entire deck that's just dedicated towards tea time because let's face it this is the Victorian era we are not getting away without having a proper stop for tea um, so that's that is the boast deck and that will be the core of your game um, and which you'll use to the various different elements that come up uh, and weave them into your story as you go along the next part um, is the patron deck um, and that is just a little deck which gives you some one-shot powers just to make it a little bit more unpredictable a little bit more spicy um, and just give a little bit more interaction you'll see a couple of those cards as we move through the game um, and the final deck of cards uh, is the benefactor deck now when you found yourself in this uh, big back alley gin shop you never realized that um, at the same time as your your storytelling, uh, the crowned heads of London uh, of <laughs> crowned heads of uh, meeting uh, at the same time, and they are all um, aficionados of the of the the drunken pub story. All of them like different things. And so the benefactors are a, just a little reward uh, for whoever manages to tell the largest number of um, of stories of the plot elements from that from a particular suit over the course of the game. It's just a little mechanic uh, that reco- that, in- that rewards um, extra risk taking over the course of the game. So how do you play? You, first of all, uh, you simply shuffle up the um, the patron cards and the boast cards cards uh, into two separate decks um, and in a two-player game as we're about to play you will deal out seven cards uh, seven boast cards to each player and one patron card um, having done that um, you can then immediately start to tell your story um, you'll play different cards uh, from your hand so for example uh, you might say that uh, I was uh, I called all of a sudden for my butler, who was in the servant deck, um, and he told me about a treason 
plot uh, that was taking place and said that I should really go and sort it out. Um, now, whilst you are laying those cards down, everyone else in the round the table is looking in their, their hand to see if they've got a card from the same suit that's got a lower value to it. And if they do, they can play that card down and say, you didn't do that. You didn't call your butler, for example. Uh, you're rather, you didn't call, your butler didn't tell you about a treason plot. He told you that someone was scrubbing, uh, which is the number one card. Um, and if that happens, uh, he has, uh, he or she has successfully proven that you were lying about your story and you have lost your turn. All of the cards that you have played go into a discard pile. However, if you get to the end of your turn and you've played at least two cards, no one has challenged you, then you get to take the cards you've got, you keep them for the end of the game, and they'll be used for scoring at the end. And that's it. Once you've designed that, you move on to the next person, you just keep going round and round and round until all of the both cards have been used. And that's that's really it. It's that simple. Okay, then. So... I think we are sort of good to go. And I think, of course, you explaining those rules, people will start to sort of crystallise in people's minds as we actually start playing it out, won't they? But what we need to do is we need to determine what the story we're telling, isn't it? Absolutely. This is the final little addition. Uh, this is uh, Countess Lovelace's dual integer combinatory engine, uh, or DICE. <laughs> it's just a little uh if you if you're running out of inspiration and don't know what story to tell you simply roll two dice and we will have a little uh plot generator for you which come up with a story right off the bat all right then so should we we're gonna go completely random so we've not prepared this at all <laughs> excellent <laughs> which which could be uh our well my failure let's put it that way because uh regulars to the channel will know that i have not been playing particularly well over these last couple of uh tuesdays <laughs> uh the guest is always winning <laughs> there's something going on i don't know so what we're going to do is we're going to use um some dice here to work out so shall we say that the red dice will be the first column and the white will be the second column of the results. We okay with that? Oh, there is uh, there is only one uh, combination for every single dice there, so you'll be fine, whatever you roll. Okay, so here we go then. So we got a one and we got a four. And just we're looking here. We're looking at number one and four. Why, to this day, nobody likes David Livingstone. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say this is one of my favourite story beginnings. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think it would um, probably think be it's... a good idea, just in case anybody is not familiar with who David Livingstone is, do you want to just uh, give us the quick history? Why not? Very... very... Very, very quick plotted history. David Livingston was a missionary uh, who went out to Africa, and part of what he did was attempt to discover the source of the Nile. Right, fair enough then. So we, we know what uh, what he's done in history. So why don't you start off, and we will see how it goes. Now, I think the best way for us to do this is because we're, we're, you're obviously, you're lying in the game, but you're a very honest person in real life. <laughs> so we, we, so we, 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 we trust the cards that we'll uh, you, you'll be playing. <laughs> but if you could, um, if as you're telling your story, if you bring the cards up to the camera, just flash them up there. And so that people can see the lovely artwork, because it is absolutely. It's important to point out that the artwork on the cards is all original art from the period. It is indeed. It is indeed. Uh, wonderful thing uh, about about the the, the period uh, is that I can use some absolutely stunning paintings, all of which is out of copyright, meaning that you get an even better value gain. Uh, I'm I'm just utterly thrilled with how this looks, and the the cards that you're about to see today um, are are the the have not yet the upgrade uh, that I'm working on now. So if you like what you see, it's going to be even better when it comes out. Yes, it's very but important enough for, for me. To... Let's uh, let's get on with the story. Yeah, it is important to say that this is, of course, a prototype version. It's not the final uh, release by any means. 
Wonderful. Um, okay, so as we, as I said earlier, I, I tend to like these things to start on my country estate. <laughs> I say I was on my country estate in the afternoon, just passing passing the time. Um, I, I, thankfully, it had only just become my um, my country estate uh, because I had just murdered my elder sister, and so it got passed on to me. And that's the nine of crimes. Nine of murder. crimes. Okay. Giving. Are we all right? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, taking that as everything's all fine. Um, and I, I sat down and said, right, um, that means that I have got some spare servants. Um, in particular, I have the ladies' maid, uh, which is a nine of servants, um, which my, my sister was no longer using. Um, and so I, I thought, what I would do is get her to go out and find me an adventure. And having managed to, if you're not challenging me, uh, played two nine, value nine cards, which is a very valuable hand, I'm going to pause there and pass the turn over to you. Okay. So I guess it's important to point out that the sort of scoring on the cards, is it seven and eights are worth one penny, uh, nine and tens are worth two? Absolutely. Uh, there are various other things that will get you points uh, towards the end of the game, uh, but you are rewarded uh, for playing high value cards. So having scored, having successfully played two nine points, I collect two uh, times two bonus pennies. And do you want to just tell us a little bit about the pennies that are going to be available in the Kickstarter? Ah, uh, uh, yes. Um, so it really depends, of course, at what level uh, you back at, and we're still trying to work out uh, precisely how we'll go. Um, but at the most basic version, uh, you, there will be the traditional card pennies. Uh, moving up to the more exclusive uh, uh, Kickstarter exclusive versions, where I'm hoping to have um, have special metal uh, coins introduced. Which is brilliant. So just in case, because it broke up slightly, so at the Imperial level, there are going to be genuine Victorian pennies to play with. I mean... How how um, sort of thematic and how pimped out can a game possibly get? <laughs> <laughs> that is why we're referring to this as the game 180 years in the making. You see, and, and now this is the thing, we, we, of course, with, with these type of games, you've got to remember where the story was up to. <laughs> so... <laughs> Absolutely. You, you had a, a maid, wasn't it? What was the last thing? Yes, yes, my lady's maid, which which my sister uh, was no longer no longer. She was no longer in requirement of this lady's maid, and um, actually, the lady's maid she once worked for Her Royal Majesty in Buckingham Palace, which was obviously quite Ooh. a. a um, a high and position, and um, you know she was well respected uh, by her friends at the time. Um, but the problem, Naturally so. the, the thing is, is that the queen um, was actually quite uh, disrespectful to this maid, uh, even though, you know, she was obviously enjoying the position and didn't want to give up the position um, because the queen always considered the maid as her personal fart catcher. <laughs> and Jamie's been so overwhelmed by this revelation, but he's frozen. <laughs> so Super Sarah is saying that that maid looks quite thrilled to be on that card. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 certainly not in that position. So the revelation was that this maid she worked in Buckingham Palace, and she was the personal maid for Queen Victoria. Uh, but to Queen Vic, uh, she referred to her as her personal fart catcher. <laughs> Excellent. No, I can't do anything about that. Okay. And it so in that case, I, I will bank those there. So I get nothing for the five, but I'm going to get two pennies for the ten. So we'll move those to one side. Excellent. Yes, you do. And it's over to you. Fantastic. Okay, now it's the beginning of my turn, so I am going to draw myself back up to seven cards because you have to play all of your challenges going um, on both all of the, the parts of the story that you tell and your challenges to other 
people with the same hand of cards. So don't get rid of the cards that you're going to need, but you don't know which ones those are going to be. Okay, so um, what did our our, our maid do? Um, well, the first thing we have to ask the question is, why was she thrown out of the service of the Queen? How did she end up with us? Uh, the simple reason was that what she was what was found on her person whilst she was in Buckingham Palace, and that was seditious writings. Oh. What, what on earth had she been in? That's five objects. Uh, and so it turned out <laughs> that she had been colluding with... <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, <laughs> also that. Uh, <laughs> uh, and who had she been selling them to? But none other than the... Um, the 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 princess of the underworld of the Victorian underworld, the, the the most dangerous gangster that any of us had ever come up against, and who was possibly um, in cahoots with David Livingstone. We'll find out later. It was Emily Bronte. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. So, I, I, is that your is that your hand? Have you banked those? No, 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 no. I'm going to go, to go de de daring, and I'm going to go for one more card. Oh, go and for that it. that is in celebration. Uh, the, well, not in celebration. The, the problem was that, uh, that Emily Bronte is a classic, um, cl classic villain, um, and whilst she, she lured our maid into, into disrepute, she simply sat there drinking tea. <laughs> which is a T-type card value of 10. No, I can't beat that at all. No, well no. played. Well, then I'm definitely pausing there. I am taking my two bonus coins and I am running with them. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. So then, I've got one, two, three, four. I've got five cards, so I need to draw up to 10. Take two more, and I need to draw a new... Um, Patron card, isn't it? That's correct. You do indeed. And just going on to the chat here, Snink80 says he's going to bet 20 drachma to James winning uh, this, <laughs> this, this game. I'd like to take that bet as well, uh, Snink. <laughs> do I have an option to bet against myself? Because I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, Snink's been doing um, reasonably well in the betting... Uh, um, <laughs> stakes of the last couple of games. <laughs> As I say, if you want me to fall to Nink and and um, both of us some money, I'm okay. just just send me a private message. <laughs> so, in fact, Super Sarah is not far off the mark in in regards to where uh, Queen Victoria's farts were actually being collected at two. Um, of course, in the day, uh, they didn't have eBay or computers, or the internet, or anything like that. Um, so the best that they could possibly do with Queen Vic's farts um, was actually to take them to the British Museum, <laughs> where, where they would be sealed in an airtight uh, room with, with valve locking so that people could go on in and, um, and delight in Her Majesty's aroma. <laughs> Now, that is entirely appropriate for a, for a queen-loving country. Well, I don't know why we don't do this today. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, of course, in order to sort of facilitate this, is that the, the maid um, was always accompanied um, to the museum by another of the, the queen's serving staff, um, the valet. Yep. And it, 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 so she was. And the, the thing, the problem being is that these two um, servants struck up a bit of a friendship. Um, and of course, they were very, very concerned that even though it was purely platonic, there was nothing uh, you know, untoward going on, um, but it would potentially cause some scandal. Uh, that, that is the logical conclusion. There's, there's no other alternative. And I think I shall bank at that point. I think you're very wise to do so. 
Um, okay, right. Um, I think I, I might just play one of my patron my patron cards now. Um, my patron card. Um, if if you can see this, we had trouble with it and the test um, is play at the start of your turn. If you save cards, so if you successfully play them, uh, worth 15 or more points over the course of this turn, you take a bonus penny. So I am going to be going big. Right. Um, so um, scandal, scandal and, and the maid and the valet. Oh, dear me. Um, OK, so immediately after uh, having gone to the British Museum with the, the, the valet, um the 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 maid had an idea an idea about how to make some money now that maiding um for the time being and that was to commit art fraud <gasps> oh which oh. is a crime of seven right uh, and, and, and just just to, uh, as an interesting note, I don't know how you can put it up to the camera to try and uh sort of get better focus. Does anybody want to sort of? Does it look like somebody famous? <laughs> because it, it's the spitting image, or I, I think, and several other people think of quite a famous actor. You might think that. I couldn't possibly comment. Could you not? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> is there something to it in that case? <laughs> you, you could be right. <laughs> wow. You could be right. This might be one of the images that isn't technically from the period. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my! There's been a whole load of us going, "Wow, how spooky that this particular actor was in Victorian times." <laughs> I used to say he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny then. <laughs> uh, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Okay, so I, I so art fraud is on the menu for the uh, for the for the lady's maid. Um, at which point uh, she decided uh, that where was the most obvious place to commit art fraud? Um, would it perhaps be the Houses of Parliament? Nay, nay, sir. For actually, no! it was happening at. The Lambeth Workhouse. <laughs> I can't do anything about that. Um, so just to let you know, this is the first time that one of us has been successfully challenged. I lose all of the cards that I played this turn. Um, if I had had a card that was lower value um, than Lambeth Workhouse, of which there is only one, um, I, I would have been able to steal uh, my go back, um, or at least just that one card back. But um, no, sorry. <laughs> That's that's it for me. Uh, that's my go over. And so what I get to I get to keep this card, don't I? Yes, you do. Well okay. done and well deserved. Okay. So May Leneth on the chat has just asked, can you explain the win condition of the game? Absolutely. Um, so throughout the game, um, for for a about three different reasons, um, you'll collect pennies either because you've played high value cards or because you played the most of a certain suit at the end of the game. Um, or uh, because of uh, some of the patron cards will give you pennies as well. And it's literally just whoever has the most pennies at the end of the game wins. And the game does progress to the point of you go through the entire deck of the boast cards, yes? That's correct, yes. Um, so that's going to be, what's that, is that 100 cards? That's 100 cards in the base deck. Um, and, well, it really depends, to be honest, because you can you can just cut the deck in half or in quarter or whatever you want to do and just play the game with that. Uh, so 50 cards will take you about 30 minutes. Um, the full deck will take you about an hour, an hour and a quarter. It's entirely up to you. Okay. All right, so hopefully that's answered your question there, May Leneth. So I'm down to one, two, three cards. I need to take up to seven. So four, five, six... Seven. All right, then. So we have got art fraud of possibly Queen Victoria's farts uh, taking place in a Lambeth workhouse. Perfectly plausible. Uh, of course, of course. As this, so this, this, um, this, this capturing and bagging and selling of Queen Victoria's um, <laughs> win. <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> has, has been going on for some time. Um, and the the Buckingham Palace gamekeeper actually <laughs> got wind of it. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he basically um, advised the valet and the maid saying, um, beware, beware, if you're taking these farts, and of course there are naked flames all around, um, there might be combustibles, and that being the case, your flammable clothing um, would potentially go up by Queen Victoria's fart. <laughs> I've, I've got nothing. you got nothing. <laughs> got nothing. You've got nothing. <laughs> And I am going to stop there. So I'm just banking those. There are not any points to them, but what it's doing is it's filling out my collections of suits. So I've got another peril card now, and I've got another servant card. Because, of course, again, one of the scoring mechanisms is that you, if you have the most of a suit, you get a penny for it. So I'm just trying to sort of flesh these suits out Okay, um, so um, uh, at, at, at this point, um, we the, our story flashes to David Livingston. Um, who, who's and he? <laughs> <laughs> he is someone who we don't know about yet. <laughs> uh, but we're about to see a very, very quick glimpse into his life. Why he is such an awful person. Why nobody likes him. Or at least how he becomes someone that nobody likes uh, because he is out practicing his his most awful hobby um, of being an incorrigible rogue, which is a crime worth five points. Yeah, oh, definitely so. Um, oh, I may quickly mention this. Um, all of the um, the crimes on the cards, in fact, every, everything that's on any of the cards uh, is all historical fact. Being an incorrigible rogue was a crime um, in Victorian England, um, and it was punishable by death, as were all of the crimes mentioned in the old Hellfire Club, including this, the thing that he was doing whilst being an incorrigible rogue, scrumping. What? Scrumping? How dare he? Hey. Absolutely. Absolutely. Soft fruit theft, just say no. Um, but the, the he was caught. Oh, yes, he was caught. Um, and he was taken to the only place suitable for such terrible crimes. Um, and that was the Tower of London. It's a place worth seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I'm going with those. I'll take them. So that's a seven. That gets me one one coin. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> but hard fruit theft is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, for the tr truth be told, no. That was also punishable by death. But I'm artistic license. <laughs> See, Super Sarah is asking the important questions of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so I got five cards. I need to get two more. We'll have that one, and we'll have that one. So, of course, David Livingstone, being a man of fine upstanding uh, within the community, uh, naturally, of course, had a butler. Because, But of course. Who wouldn't? And as Livingstone went on his travels, uh, he was quite partial to wanting to take uh, items um, that he had collected um, over many years of exploring. And, and it was the butler's task to carry these with him uh, on these expeditions. Um, and the butler, you know, what well, such a good sort uh, because he was forced to have to carry an overstuffed walrus. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid he wasn't. <laughs> he was forced to carry a mangle. A mangle? No. A mangle. Standards cannot possibly drop. Even even in darkest Africa, he had to carry the the mangle so that David Livingstone could have carefully pressed trousers. So I lose my two cards. That's three points, three pennies worth that I have lost. Oh. So 
They go away over there. Not to be banked. Oh, I, I, I feel good. I feel now as though I'm, I'm getting into my stride. Um, and so um, we get we're carrying on with David Livingston. Um, but I'm going to play another patron card at this point. Um, and this one is for the rest of this turn, every peril card I successfully play earns me a bonus penny. So some risks here, but let's go for it anyway. OK, um, so David Livingston, as we previously established, um, is trekking through Africa with his butler and a mangle. Um, and what else could he possibly feel but the sheer pointlessness of existence? Um, and he feels disillusioned with life, which is a peril worth eight, which is a bit of a risk. Yeah, you're good. You're good to go. Oh, fantastic. Excellent. In which case, he also was feeling the risk of poverty because one he was a, a a missionary and therefore was poor anyway um but he was thinking oh gosh relatively i'm really rich here in africa but i'm gonna have to go back to london where i will have relatively little money um and so i will have to turn to crime uh to make my ends meet um uh, and with that i'm going to pause in this terrible insight into david livingston's life um, I get a bonus penny because uh, Disillusionment of Life is worth eight. Uh, but both of those were peril cards, so I get two bonus points there. And I'm feeling good. So We could be on to 20 drachma win. <laughs> so what was the value of those two peril cards that you played? Uh, eight and two. You see, so just to go on to the sort of card counting uh, group <laughs> amongst us... Uh, <laughs> Jamie might, might have noticed that I previously played a seven and a five, and maybe he had those cards. And now, of course, it was a good opportunity to play a high and then the low, uh, knowing that he would be quite safe. And of course, getting hold of that uh, uh, benefactor card, it all paid off. Maybe I I can't can't possibly say that would be uh, that would be telling. So, of course, while Livingstone is in the uh, heart of Africa, um, he would not be able to go out there collecting farts without his trusty service revolver. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't do that. No, 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 absolutely, yes. Sensible plan. Okay. And in addition, to, so you've got to imagine this scene now from the uh, one of the Austin Powers movies, where he's in the tent and it's the the shadow uh, against the uh, the light. Yes, yes. Do, does okay, everyone, yeah, everyone know you, what I want? Um, I don't want to describe it too much. <laughs> uh, and has his butler is 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 retrieving the the trusty service revolver. He then also <laughs> <laughs> takes out a cutthroat razor as the the Zulus are looking on, gasping in horror, <laughs> and as one would. <laughs> And after he takes out the cutthroat razor, he leans on in and takes out a policeman's truncheon. My word! <laughs> Where is he keeping all of these things? Is there no end to the items that Livingstone has upon his person? Indeed, <laughs> indeed there isn't, for their final item was, of course, being a British man, a trusty umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> I, I dread to think of the state of his trousers. <laughs> I, <laughs> but there is nothing I can do. No, you're, yes. <laughs> okay, and so I will bank all of those. <laughs> well done. Very well done. <laughs> it only works if you've watched the Austin Powers film. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you'll have to Google that one. Ca yeah, cargo pockets for the win, indeed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, um, I, so that brings it around to my turn then, is, in, if you're done. It does indeed. Okay, um, well, okay, go big go or go home. Um, it's, as, as you will all be completely aware, um, the, the, it, it, at this point in time in, in, in Zululand, it was totally not the done thing 
uh, to wear trousers, let alone to keep anything in them. In fact, if you were caught putting anything in your pockets, that was just seen as a totally inappropriate thing to do and children would be shied away from you. Um, so David Livingston um, had been revealed to be doing a terrible faux pas, oh. which is a peril worth 10. In fact, I must disagree, sir. <laughs> for, oh, damn it. In, in fact, it was not a faux pas. It was just pure boredom. That's why he was keeping oh, things in his pockets. He didn't care about the rules of society. He just oh. did it out of boredom. <laughs> well, I suppose that that is is probably more plausible. I, when bored, I put things in my trousers, so fair <laughs> dues. <laughs> <laughs> so I get to keep the peril card. You get to lose your high point card there. I do indeed. So that's my turn over after a very short time. <laughs> yeah. Mr. David Livingstone and his um, unfeasibly large pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back to uh, the great city of London, he would actually be down for treason. No. Because he was a, a, an incorrigible rogue. That, well, that's, that's the logical thing. That's exactly what he would do. Right. And... He was tipped off by this fact by the gardener. And he said, oh, thank you, good sir, for uh, for uh, letting me know. Uh, ah, no, 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 uh, he didn't. Oh, he didn't. didn't. Now, this is not a uh, this is not a challenge. This is just a patron card that says force another player to discard a servant card they have just played. Oh. Any effect is cancelled. So your your gardener is gone, but you get to carry on with your turn. So gardener didn't tell him about treason. He knows nothing about it. Totally innocent. How could you besmirch the gardener? Yeah. Um you're gonna. I'm gonna play this card, but you're you're going to have to explain it. We're gonna to have to just step out of the game for a moment here. Okay. So so actually, while he's in deepest Africa, there's always time for tea, and so he has deviled kidneys. What are deviled kidneys? Dev oh, I, this is possibly the most revolting thing I've ever come across. Um, it's literally just fried kidneys with a load of spices and why anyone would want to eat them i've got absolutely no idea but they were so popular in victorian times i mean the things just take urine out of your body and people oh no <laughs> <laughs> really i mean scrumping say no but but kid deviled kidneys just run screaming oh okay, okay so we're not we're not having deviled kidneys well that being the case then I think the safest thing for us to do is have some potted crab because that Good you know, plan. sounds a little bit safer. Now remind me, potted crab, which what what number is that? It's number three. <gasps> Damn it! Carry on. And at that point I'll bank. <laughs> oh damn. Okay, so I'm gonna have to play that card. <laughs> and so with the potted crab. Um, David Livingston also had a steaming pot of coffee, which frustratingly is worth four. <laughs> um, and he sat there and he contemplated what he would do now that he was back from, from Africa. Uh, he was still a lowly missionary, um, he, he, but he craved more. He craved excitement. He craved all the things that a missionary shouldn't crave. Uh, but above all, what he craved most of all um, was fortune and glory, which is a motive card worth five. Oh, okay. Um, I'm taking that and... Um, no, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep that because it's a good challenge card. You'll find out about them later. Um, so, what did he decide to do? What was the the thing that could bring him far fastest uh, to the front pages of the um, of the newspapers? He would steal Emmeline Pankhurst, a person worth six. Okay. <laughs> so he's, he's stealing the person. <laughs> he's stealing the person. He may get a replica person made uh, complete with farts. Um, <laughs> um, but we'll see, because that's in your control. 
Um, okay. None of those cards get me any bonus points, but they will do me quite nicely in filling out my little suits. Very good, sir. So I'm going to play a benefactor card. Um, so if I get to save 15 or more points, I get a bonus penny. Okay, I am going to be watching you like a hawk. I'm sure you are. So we're going to put her <laughs> just there so that I can. it'll remind me. It'll remind you. <laughs> right then, let's see what we've got. When Livingstone was stealing Emily Pankhurst, she, of course, was taking tea, eating cucumber sandwiches, as one does. As he burst into the tea shop, his manservant decided to cause a distraction by shouting to one of the clientele, oh, Oi! Gong Farmer! Which, of course, is a terrible, terrible insult to, to shout out it in public, just <laughs> randomly. Yep. yep. And then Livingstone, no, no would want that. <laughs> Livingstone crouched down behind the, um, the fairy cake dis display stand, used his Amazonian blowpipe to sting Emily Pankhurst in the neck, rendering her unconscious, picking her up and dragging her out of the store. I've, I've got nothing. I nothing? can't do it. Nothing? No. And, no, and those then, are yours. And then because he's, he's such a cool cat, is David Livingstone, he flicks the, um, the store owner uh, a shiny sixpence and, and in a Harrison Ford style -y. Sorry about no. the mess. No, he doesn't. No, no. <laughs> he doesn't. You pushed too far. No. He didn't break a shiny sixpence. He flicks a rubber duck. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there we go. You're quite right, you see. I should have stayed before, but I was getting, getting cocky. <laughs> and I've lost them all. Sorry. And I don't, I don't get my extra bonus penny. Ah. Oh. You don't get your bonus penny. Ah. Oh. I, I feel sorry, but this is, that was really good for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, right. Um, and, and so flicking back to us, um, temporarily. Oh, right. Um, so there, there had been plot. Um, in between this time and then, um, after which I had seemingly not been caught um, for murder as it happened at the beginning of the story. Um, and I had quite rightly um, been given the Victoria Cross, which is an object worth nine. Oh, very good, sir. Very good. Oh, I didn't think I'd get away with that. Um, and the reason I had been given the Victoria Cross um through some administrative admin, uh, because it's meant to just be given to, for people for military stuff, uh, but I had been given it um, for all of the work that I had done for the good of the poor, which is a uh, a motive card worth three. Mm, yeah, you're still good. And uh, so I'm going to go quite, go very very safe. Um, and actually, the thing is, I haven't actually done anything for the poor. Nothing at all. Um, I had simply been wandering around the road um, and had actually just felt like just throwing money everywhere for sheer whimsy. Worth <laughs> <laughs> one. Very good. Uh, but it had been misinterpreted. <laughs> and so that's where I'm ending. Um, the Victoria Cross is worth nine, so that's two bonus pennies. Um, but that's all I get for that. Welcome back, Sarah. Jamie's just played an awesome hand to which I could do nothing with. We flash back to, to Sir David Livingstone. <laughs> Fair <laughs> in, enough. In his under, underground volcano lair. <laughs> 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 That's what he's been doing in Africa all these years. And the, the camera pans through this, this enormous cavern where we see sort of frozen in ice personalities of the day to where he's been collecting them and their farts and we first we come across 
Charles Darwin. With, with, yep. a, with, a, with a, a small dog by his feet. Oh. oh. <laughs> and next to, Carl, uh, to Charles Darwin was Karl Marx. I, I think you're onto a safe run here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> and so um, and, and as you can imagine, this this cavern is immense, and there are just lines and lines and lines of famous personalities, all frozen, suspended, all having farts collected from them, to which we're all going to find themselves I- I- into um, into his collection. To which, of course, Queen Victoria's fart was the one fart he couldn't get hold of because, of course, <laughs> her being the queen, it's hard for her to go missing. But these other personalities, they're easy. And in addition to fart collecting, Livingstone did like to pick their pockets or two. <laughs> Fair enough. Nothing I can do with that. Nothing you can do? No, sorry. I wish I could. I'll bank but on that then. That's fair enough. Um, so at that point, we're going to take an uncharacteristic, entirely appropriate uh, cut um, back to London, um, where having um, having um, showered coins all over the poor um, and injured relatively few of them, I have been promoted uh, for no apparent reason. <laughs> Uh, head of Great Scotland Yard <laughs> and the nascent uh, police force of the day uh, because having so much experience of crime, having committed so many of them and gotten away with it, I must know something special uh, about how criminals get away with things. Uh, indeed, that very morning, and that's a place worth five, uh, that very morning I had gotten away with being drunk in ch- which is a crime worth four. Yeah, you're good with your you're, 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 you're being as drunk. Well. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I, so I had been galloping um, down the, 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 the new Victoria embankment um, drunkenly on my horse um, when I wrapped it around a uh, lamppost um, and was tended to by the, the nurse Mary Seacole, uh, who is a person worth... Eight, and there's a bit of a risk. No, you're good to go. You're good to go. Yes. Okay, I am taking that. I'm taking my bonus point, and I have been drunk in charge of a horse. That was literally my whole aim for this game. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah's just saying. Carry on. I, I have a client that's supposed to be calling in 30 minutes. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I hope they don't because this is great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I am. <laughs> and, and and of course, the sound logic of where you're going to, you know, pick pocket your farts from, of course, would be the pockets, wouldn't he? You know, so, so Livingstone was on, onto something there. That makes sense. Definitely. Okay. So why was Livingstone committing all of these crimes, all of these um, outrageous acts? It was on mitigating self-interest. <laughs> uh it turns out it was yes but actually what he, the real reason behind it all was that he was doing it for a kiss and there was only one person in this entire world worthy of livingstone's kiss none other van I can't see. You can't see. You can't see. Is it frozen for you? I can't see. It's frozen. It's completely frozen. Oh, no. Oh, no. I got to move it. I'm going to pause and come back. I was was doing an internet-only gag. (laughs) Oh, no. I I will be back with you as soon as I have seen the advert for Warhammer 2. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Which, it's deadly. It's another good game, but not this one. <laughs> <laughs> Again, due to, due to editing, you you will get your reaction instantly of, of me putting down the card. So we, we have to practice this. 
Well, that's fair enough. Okay, I, I, I am readying my sharp intake of breath. That's it. Okay, breathing out now. <gasps> no! <laughs> <laughs> Not David Livings. What a narcissist. He's going to kiss himself. He loves himself so much. <laughs> my word. <laughs> my. Honestly, the cat. The cat. Equally, with that fulsome moustache. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What a handsome chap. Okay, I will bank those. But, but there he is. There he is, everybody. This, this, so, I think. Yes. This is the gen gentleman of, of, of our, our tale. <laughs> There we go. Um, right that. Um, so, now, traditionally speaking, you might think back in London uh, that, uh, that David Livingston's African volcano lair was outside of the jurisdiction uh, of, of the London police, but you would be forgetting that this was Victorian London. And everywhere was within the jurisdiction of the Victorian police. And so I set about and chartered HMS Warrior. <laughs> a weapon worth ten. No, actually, I disagree. What you actually chartered was basically a raft strung together with barrels of dynamite, which is not necessarily the safest <laughs> of, of vessels. <laughs> It's no, 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 no. That that that's a risk. It was a calculated <laughs> risk, but a bad one. <laughs> okay, I, I I lose. There we go. Oh, I, I keep that, don't I? Yes, of course. <laughs> My raft of dynamite. In fact, um, on top of this dynamite raft was the prince consort's own rifle brigade. as they uh, sailed to the coast of Africa, to which they made it successfully. Though, of course, there was always the peril of impending death. But something's not worth doing. Well, yes. Well, that, there's this precious little way to challenge that. Yeah. And upon arriving at the jetty, quite to their surprise, they were met by Prime Minister William Gladstone. Yes, yes, they were. To, it, to issue them with their instructions. And I shall leave it there. Oh, man. I'll bank those. Well, that was altogether too good a turn. Um, and so, um, Gladstone, who, as we all remember, uh, um, being Prime Minister, was, was hated by everyone, um, pretty much... As, as much as um, as David Livingstone was, but not quite. Um, but actually, hadn't met David Livingstone. Um, I, I took uh, the chance to to load some insults into my insult revolver. Two in particular. First of all, I called David. I called uh, William Gladstone a church bell, which is an insult worth two. Okay. And. Then I decided to take it up a notch and I called William Gladstone a flap doodle. Oh my goodness, no, no, that's not what I heard, sir. I heard you call him a mangy cur. No! Damn it! <laughs> you saved it! <laughs> I really shouldn't have press searched that. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> and Super yeah, Sarah, yeah. no, not the flap that. doodle. <laughs> yes, well, no, not the flap doodle. <laughs> not the flap doodle at all. No, oh. just mangy cur. Okay. Oh, well. <laughs> we then cut to... We leave Gladstone and Livingstone on the pier in Africa, but we cut back to good old London and to the Savoy, the world's finest hotel, cocktail bar, theatre, and grill joint. But what they were serving on this particular day 
There's, of course, a nice bit of crumpet. And having this crumpet was Abdul Karim, who was the tutor and confidant to Her Majesty, the Queen. I know I'm back. I'm not sure what happened there, but I am. Um, and I was asking, what was, what was the value of crumpet? I forget. <laughs> uh, half a sixpence. And as uh, Super Sarah is saying, he looks like he enjoys a crumpet or two. <laughs> <laughs> no, Super Sarah, you've ta you've taken this game on a wonderful path, <laughs> and that's the beauty of it. Is it just <laughs> lends itself to just going in any direction, any direction. And of course, Abdul Karim, tutor and confidant to the Queen, was doing it all for Queen and country. Absolutely. And I think I shall end there. With Kareem well, fair enough. in the Savoy, um, in eating crumpet, feeling very honourable. Naturally. Naturally. Um, and it's a good job that he was doing it for Queen and Country. For who should then walk in? But the Queen herself. Dun, dun, dun. A person worth ten. <laughs> so Sarah, Sarah, Sarah's just asking a question here. So you can put down the story cards in any point order. Yes, you can. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. Um, and the, the order in which you choose to play them is one of the tactical elements of the game. Because, of course, it is a lower-valued card that would challenge of the same suit, isn't it? Uh, precisely. So if you have a... a well, it is the, the Queen is the highest person card, as you would expect. Uh, so if you have a person card at all, you will be able to challenge me. Uh, which, of course, then tells you a lot about my current hand, then, doesn't it? <laughs> Excellent. I wish I had more person cards to play, but I don't. Um, and so I'm going to have to try and drag something else up. Um, and what what had the Queen got secreted about her person um, that she was trying to keep hidden so that no one would see it? Um, and definitely not the police. What was responsible for her copious amounts of gas um, that would one day become the powerful fuel that kept the British Empire going. Nothing other than a huge quantity of opium. <laughs> Which is an object worth seven. <laughs> Sarah's thinking it's soft fruit. <laughs> so I'm afraid not. Well, I suppose in a way it is. Uh, but no, I'm taking it that, um, that, that that's not going challenged. No, if it's you're, not, you're I'm good taking to go. that. You go for it. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So I get uh, three points for that because they are a 10 and a 7. Um, so by all means, carry on. Ah, very good. So I have three cards need to draw up. Obviously, Queen Victoria's um, problem with the, the breaking of Royal Wind uh, was due to the fact of an overly tight corset. <laughs> push, push, it pushing it was. Pushing it all downwards. <laughs> and, um, yep. and actually, she just could not eat cress because that absolutely, <laughs> it was just, it, it was just not, not a good. Not, it's, it's hard times. That's it's, it. It's hard being a queen. It is, yes. You know, <laughs> I, I can have venison, but cress just isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> and do, 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 do. let's just look. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to take those Fair two enough. cards. Fair enough. Well, I am going to go. Um... Oh, Sarah's asking. She doesn't know what cress is. What it's uh, known of, it's known of like salad grass. Yes. 
<laughs> that is the best description I've ever heard of it. Uh, imagine the most pointless, tiny, leafy thing that you could possibly imagine, and that that really is Chris. Yeah. It's, it is quite, you, you, you grow it as kids, don't you? When, you, when you're in, in young yeah. school, it's the first thing that you can actually grow, <laughs> and not nobody fails on it. <laughs> <laughs> then it's the first science experiment you'll ever do at school. It's just leaving Cress somewhere warm. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, painful memories. Um, okay, so my go. Um, unless you're carrying on, of course. No, no, no. Please do carry on. No, fair enough. Um, in which case, I am going to take another risk, and I'm going to play another patron card, which is the play if you uh, manage to successfully play 15 uh, points worth of cards or more, you get a bonus penny card. Um, and so, I am going to start off with, well, um, yes, exactly like Sprouts. Exactly like, at least a bit like Sprouts, if I think that's what you're thinking of. I just realised that if some people can't see the uh, the chat, um, that, that, that will make absolutely no sense. But equally, most of what's happened won't. So we're in a good place. Anyway, back to the story. Um, what's the what is the real problem here? Uh, it's that Queen Victoria, um, our head of state, the most powerful person in the world, um, a book who um, by the time she died had a larger waist measurement than her height. Um, was thoroughly addicted to opium, which is a peril worth six. No, nope, you can go for that. Excellent. Um, in which case, I will take the not quite so big risk of saying that um, that it was clear that she was partaking um, at the moment. She, her eyes were 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 wide. She was clearly seeing things, and she was complaining. Um, that the waiters were all um, intending to beat her up um, and she wanted them all arrested for thuggery, which is a peril worth four. Ooh, you're good on that as well. No, okay, so we're at, we're at ten. I've got to get five more out of this. Um, but she was still the queen. Um, and as such, her manners were completely impeccable. Um, and so she sat down um, and calmly ordered some Devonshire scones with cream. Which is tea time worth six. No, you're good on that one. Then I'm taking those. That's 16 points. I get myself a bonus penny. So Sarah's just saying here, so... Um... Not quite understanding the point system, but enjoying the story. So, Sarah, a point system as in how we are amassing points for ourselves or how Jamie was trying to get up to 15 points in his cards? You just let us know which one. I think it might be the latter. Yeah. So, essentially, it's just the, it's just the value of the cards, isn't it, Jamie? That's absolutely right. Um, so there are uh, 100 boast cards uh, in the game. Uh, split out into 10 suits of 10 cards, and each uh, card in a suit is worth 1 to 10. Uh, so there's a card of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 um, in each suit. And that, that's it. That's that's literally as complicated as it goes. You could play this game very, very drunk very, very easily. Okay. So... But the actual scoring of the, of the for the game side of it is that you only get a point... Uh, sorry, you only score if you bank cards, uh, which, of course, is when you are not challenged and you've played down at least two cards. And the points come from, if it's a seven or eight, you get one penny. If it's a nine or a ten, you get two pennies. So it's actually only small amounts of points that start building up from the initial, uh, from cards themselves. But then in addition to that, you get bonus pennies if you have matched the requirements of a benefactor card, usually one penny from that. And at the end of the game, we will count up how many cards we have of each suit. And whomever has got the most of a particular suit gets an additional two pennies. And that's it. Again, it's it's a very easy uh, scoring sort of system to it. It doesn't get itself overly complicated on it, which is beautiful then because, as James <laughs> says, you can then just pay it in the pub and 
just have lots of fun and go, hey, you're the winner. Woo-hoo. That is exactly it. Exactly. So hang on. So, so Sarah's just saying, just looking here, and if you have one of the type but lower, you cancel the player's card. That's totally right. Yes. Yep, spot on. So that's how the challenges work. So obviously we're looking at each other's cards, hope for, hoping we've got the same suit that's being played as a value lower because then we can cut on in. I think as a two-player game, we're, we, we get a reasonable amount of interaction, but certainly when you get three, four, five players, and of course, you know, we've kind of got an idea of what we might have because you can remember what cards are being played by people. But when you've got four or five players, you ain't got a chance. <laughs> Nope. Unless you're really good, <laughs> and the and the the game goes up. I've I've played it at eight players as well, and that's it's just glorious madness. It's amazing, but it's chaos. <laughs> so, so you sacrifice your lower to cancel their higher. Yes, yeah, that's totally right. Of course, you you could play lots of low valued cards in the attempt to to build up that deck so that you win your pennies at the end of the game. Um, And of course, by playing a low value, you're hoping that there's nobody who's got lower than you, that the odds are, are, of course, are are less. Uh, Certainly, if you know what cards they've already played. And yes, Sarah, absolutely. Uh, One deck is enough for eight players. You could possibly try more, um, but I think that eight's, eight's probably the upper limit for um, a really good game. Okay, and just a quick hello to Snowyak, who's just turned up from a barbecue. Well, I hope you had a good time, sir. We are uh, regaling a story of the infamous Dr. Livingstone uh, and a maid and manservant who collects farts from Queen Victoria and Livingstone's got a uh, volcano lair in the deepest of Africa, to which he has a cavern full of frozen personalities of the day. And Queen Vic is on opium, and she can't eat cress. And, it, uh, and, and now you've <laughs> know all that. You're totally up to date. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there, there's nothing else you need to know. <laughs> 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 uh, no, Snowyak, no, do I really e- e- ever kid on this channel? <laughs> do I ever? <laughs> so it's five cards. Is it my go? It is indeed your go. It's my, it's, I've, got, I've got five cards. I'm going to pick up two more. I'm getting close to the end of the deck here, so I think we, we are coming to the end soon, aren't we? We could well be. Okay, so let's see what we got. <laughs> oh, it's pure fart collecting magic in here. <laughs> <laughs> so the queen, leaving the Savoy, having been repulsed by the excessive amount of crest sandwiches that she's found around her, and <laughs> and tripping her corset off on opium, she heads on outside <laughs> to call down a handsome cab. To which... Yes. When she gets there, there's a, a young uh, stable lad tending for the horses. Yep. yep. And she says, Take me to Whitechapel. No! No, she doesn't! Ah. You see, the Queen, having been desperately sick um, of Cress, thought, What is the opposite of Cress? It's clearly fish! So take me to Billingsgate Fish Market! No! <laughs> I lose all those cards. Phew. Um, okay. Um, so what does the Queen do? Um, she is, as we say, off her corset on opium um, and is, is feeling like a night out. Uh, and what what do um, queens do um, on on nights out in Victorian London? Well, it's the things that they can't do in everyday life. Um, 
And so she decides to go on a tour of London, uh, making fun of people who are having a bad time. Um, so first of all, she goes to Newgate Prison, which is a place worth three. Yeah, you're good to go. Uh, yep. Yeah. And so um, just stands outside the prison gate, um, laughing and waving at people saying, oh, look, I'm free. I can do whatever I want. Um, and then, <laughs> then she takes herself deep, deep into Whitechapel that she previously had been, but I'm not playing that as a card, so I don't have it. Um, but what she really wants to do is find some vagrants, and so to get, which is a crime worth three, and say, "Oh, look at me! I've got money ah, and a house." And <laughs> <laughs> very big house, which has been played earlier, I think. Um, and so having, which is a crime worth three, um, and so having done that, um, she realises that she has a very large number of servant cards in her hand, and so decides to go for a really big run of servants. Um, first of all, uh, she goes to find her childhood governess, who is a servant worth seven. Yep, you're on a roll. You keep going. Excellent. <laughs> uh, and simply says, oh, I didn't learn anything when I was little. Um, and then she goes to find a housemaid, which is a, a servant worth five, and just farts in a room and then tells the, uh, the housemaid to find what's dirty and clean it. Um, and then she goes and sits behind a curtain and watches her try to find it. Um, and then she goes to the scullery to find the scullery maid, who is a servant worth three and simply says, ah, you're a scullery maid. Um, God, that's a pretty crappy life. And uh, then she stops because I've got no cards left. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a high scoring turn. That, well, yes. <laughs> that was very lucky. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been great if you had one of those uh, patron cards to have put up? Uh, uh, oh, play? that would have been amazing. <laughs> What oh, oh thank what would be even worse if it actually turns out that I did have those cards now. So <laughs> one, I two, three. Oh, so in fact you've played your last hand, I take it then, yes? Well no no no. I um, no no I I mean I've got two i I've got two cards left in my hand and I've got some left in a pile, but I'd I'd run out of cards that I was um, willing to play. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, let's see what we've got here then. Um, but given that I've played so many of the cards in my hand, you have a very good chance of playing things successfully, which is a bad tactical choice on my part. Right then. Let's start big. So as she's running around Buckingham Palace, uh, opium-induced, making life hell for uh, the servants, she runs... In uh, grabs hold of the, uh, the the crown jewels. Was it Albert? It was Albert, wasn't it? Yes, Albert. Yes. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. She said she's got all of the crown jewels. That's fair um, enough. And um, and she goes, Albert, you are a hobbity doy. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> he goes. Well then, you then, my lady, is a hedge creeper. Damn it, yep, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Got a sense of what's going on here. <laughs> uh, to which then Albert jumps promptly onto his penny penny farthing and rides out of the room because <laughs> they are, of course, <laughs> still in Buckingham Palace. <laughs> and when you're rich, this is the type of stuff you can do. <laughs> Absolutely. And why wouldn't you? Um, because Albert is off for the price of a stiff drink. And potentially going to go and commit the crime of bigamy. <laughs> I really am just running out of stuff now. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and he's doing it all for the old school tie. Oh. No, I can't do anything. So I'll play all those. 
But that is it for me. I've got no cards left. Then that is the end of the game. The, you, you keep on playing until you run out of most cards. Well done, sir. Oh no! Well, well, we we have to, we well, we have to see what. Yes, what a, so what an awesome tale we've we've woven. <laughs> I'm not quite sure we got. Well, I suppose we have kind of answered why nobody likes David Livingston. Um, I think so. I think we answered a lot of other questions as well. Yeah, Just yes, questions that were never asked. <laughs> That's it. Yes, on the, the actual cards, the pennies I would have got that was twenty pennies. And I am on 18. Ooh. This is Ooh. tight. Oh, okay. This is, this is going to be good. Right. So now it's a case of who's got the most of particular suits. Oh, so actually, can you add any of your benefactor cards? Did you get... I already have, unfortunately. <laughs> ah, right. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't receive any. So, okay. So it's purely down on the collection of suits then to determine the winner. 24 for me and, and score. Well, that was a very, very close game. Right up to the wire. <laughs> yeah. But, so, I've actually won a game. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> this doesn't happen often on this channel. I've actually won. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm so pleased to have done this for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it's, it's all downhill from here onwards, but, but at least here and now... <laughs> <laughs> exclamation hype yay there we go <laughs> so there we are oh that was fantastic um uh, thank you so so much uh jamie for coming on and playing the game with us and i hope everybody on the chat has enjoyed watching and uh going along with the story when is this game going to be available for people to get involved with to get their copy 9th of april 9th of April, we're, going, we're launching on Kickstarter. Um, I really, really hope that you've enjoyed it. I really hope um, that you will back it or, or just spread the word or tell one person. Um, it, would, it would just be fantastic. And Sarah's just saying, so much fun. Thanks for the laughs at work. <laughs> we, we aim to please. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Jamie. And uh, yes. Good luck with the game. Of course, we'll, we'll talk to you before that point and uh, have a great evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have fantastic days, nights, whatever you're having. Bye-bye for now, Bye, all. Well, that was a lot of fun. I thoroughly enjoyed myself playing that, and I'm, uh, I'm sure you guys uh, in enjoyed it as much uh, watching it. Right then, so have an awesome evening. Thank you very much for watching um, and good night and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.